In this video, we will show you how to replace your rear brake caliper on the Chevy Malibu. This is part of your rear brakes located behind your rear wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing you need to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground. Once you've done that, we're going to continue on with a 22 millimeter to remove each of our five lug nuts and then remove the wheel from the area. Let's pay attention to the caliper. On the caliper, you're going to find that you have a bleeder screw typically protected with a bleeder screw cover. Remove the cover, give it a quick inspection, make sure it's soft and pliable and not torn or worn. Use an 11 millimeter to turn this counterclockwise and open it up. Before you do so, we need to mention, hand and eye protection and have a collection bucket under this area. We want to wait until we see a steady trickle of fluid coming out and then we'll close this bleeder screw. I got my bucket under there. My 11 millimeter. Once you see a trickle of fluid coming out of here, we can continue on. Now that we've done that, before we start removing the caliper, the next thing we need to do is carefully start opening up this bleeder screw one more time. We're gonna have to make our way into the passenger compartment and press down on that brake pedal all the way to the floor as far as possible and hold it there. While doing so, you're going to find that brake fluid comes out of the bleeder screw. While we're holding that down in that position, we'll make our way back out here and close this bleeder screw. Throughout the rest of the process, we'll leave the bar in place until we're ready to start bleeding the brakes. Get my wrench. here, close this off. Now that we have that off of there, let's just make sure that we can spin the rotor a little bit here. This should be able to spin because we do not have fluid pressure inside of our rear brake caliper. Moving from there, we'll continue on with our 11 millimeter. We're moving to the banjo bolt. This is the bolt that holds the flex hose to the caliper. Go ahead and turn this counterclockwise to break it free. Get some movement there. Now that we broke that free, let's pause here and we can continue on with removing the caliper from the area. Let's move along the back side of the caliper here. You'll find that you have two 13 millimeter caliper slider bolts. As you remove your mounting hardware, give it a quick inspection. If it needs to be replaced, now's the time to do it. Should never put grease on your mounting hardware. Let's give this a wiggle. At this point, we should be able to pull this out of here and we'll give the piston a quick inspection. There we are. Let's move along to removing the brake pads from this area. Now we can remove the caliper bracket. You'll find that this is held in place with two 18 millimeter headed mounting bolts. As for this upper bolt, you may find that it really doesn't want to come out past this other suspension mounting bolt. That's okay. We'll loosen this up, completely remove this one, and then we should be able to move things around as needed to be able to fully remove that bolt. Inspect your mounting hardware. Once again, you should not have any grease like this on your mounting hardware.
Now we can start removing the caliper from the vehicle. Pay attention to your emergency brake cable. You'll find that it comes from this pivot area here, comes straight on through this bracket. While it makes its way through the bracket, it's actually held in place with a small clip. Go ahead and pull that clip out of there. You can use pliers, small screwdriver, whatever you have. Just give that a quick inspection. To continue removing the emergency brake cable from the actuating pivot, use some pliers. Take hold of that pivot point, go ahead and give it a little twist, and pull the cable right on out of there. Might have to use a couple sets of pliers here. We want to be careful not to damage that emergency brake cable. Once you have that disconnected, make sure that you completely inspect the emergency brake cable. Make sure it's not damaged in any way. If it is, you're going to want to replace that. Let's take hold of it and pull it out of its bracket. Got that little protected sheathing here. We're gonna have to slide it right on through there. When you go to hang the caliper aside, be extremely careful you're not putting swinging pressure on your flex hose. That can cause catastrophic damage. Let's start removing the banjo bolt holding the flex hose to the caliper using an 11 millimeter. As you remove this, we're paying attention to those gaskets. You'll find that you have one gasket on each side of the flex hose. One in between the banjo bolt and the flex hose, and one in between the flex hose and the caliper itself. There it is, friend. Before we can install the brand new caliper, we need to pay attention to that flex hose and banjo bolt. I already told you that you have a gasket on each side of that flex hose. We need to completely remove everything from the flex hose, clean the flex hose, and then we'll get ready to install. This one off of here. You can remove the banjo bolt, and of course, make sure you do have that other washer. Let's have a look at both sides of the flex hose. Confirm that the mounting point is clean and free of any debris. Let's prepare our brand new caliper for installation. Remove your banjo bolt and new gaskets. We'll set those aside. We will be using these. Now you'll find that you have two 13 millimeter headed mounting bolts holding the caliper to the bracket. Remove each of those two bolts. Remove the caliper from the bracket, set the caliper itself aside for now. With that out of the way, let's continue on to removing our two caliper slider pins and their protective boots. Hold onto the boot, take hold of the pin, and remove the pin from the boot itself. When you do remove these, you need to pay attention to where each one of them go. Once you have that out of there, the next thing we like to do is apply a little bit more lubricant to the shafted area and to this point right where the boot will sit. Once you're sure that's well lubricated, you can continue on to carefully sliding that back into the port and make sure the boot's completely seated. If it's sitting out like this, moisture or debris might make its way on the inside. Go ahead and work that around a little bit. Do the exact same thing on the other side of the caliper bracket. Let's lightly lubricate the area before we reinstall tins. When doing so, you don't want to have so much lubricant that it squeezes out and potentially gets on your braking friction material. If it looks like there's too much, just go ahead and wipe it down. Let's get these in place. Pay attention in the center, that is where the locking tabs will be. 
We'll press this into place and then reach along the center and make sure it's completely locked in. Do the exact same thing on the other side of the bracket. Take hold of the caliper. Let's prepare to install the emergency brake cable. Slide the cable through the port in the caliper bracket here. We're being careful for our boot. We don't want to cause any damage. Once you have it bottomed out, continue on with your locking clip. Slide it in, make sure it's completely secure. We've got the clip in there, let's continue on with our protective boot. Slide that into position. Now we can continue on to putting the end of the emergency brake cable into this actuator lever. Use your pliers, carefully pivot this, and use a second set of pliers to pull this into place. If you find that the caliper moves around too much on you while you're trying to do so, you could have a second person hold it for you or carefully hold it in place with a ratcheting strap. Just gonna make sure you get that ball directly inside of this slot. Now it's time to attach the flex hose to the caliper. When doing so, make sure you have your banjo bolt and a brand new crush gasket. We'll take it and slide it straight on through that flex hose. At this point, take another gasket and put it on the opposite side of the flex hose. You can see we have a gasket on each side of the flex hose. Go ahead and take that and put it in position on the caliper and we'll snug it up. Snug this for now. Once we have everything back together, we'll continue on fully tightening that. Now it's time for the caliper bracket. Make sure you clean those mounting bolt threads, and if you're gonna use the red locker, go ahead and use some blue. Once you've started these in by hand, snug them up, torque those to 74 foot-pounds. After you've torqued them to 74, you need to continue an additional 60 degrees. Let's get this lower one. Now that we have that bolt torqued, do the same exact thing to the upper mounting bolt. You may find you have a hard time getting your socket into this area. If so, continue on with a wrench and make sure it's nice and tight. Now it's time for our brake pads. When you go to install the brake pads, have a look along the back side. For the inboard pad, you're going to find that you have two wear indicators. On the outboard pad, looking at the outboard side, you will not have any wear indicators. Continue on by putting these in place. We'll slide them into the bracket. There we are. Double check to make sure it can move around and it's not stuck in there. If you have to use a hammer, something's not right. Let's get the outboard pad in there. Add some high temperature lubricant along the metal aspect of your caliper piston and along the back side of each of these two caliper ears. This will help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall. Take this and slide it into place and start in each of your two 13 millimeter headed caliper slider bolts. Thank you. 
Start them in, snug them up, and then torque those to 20 foot-pounds. After that, continue torquing them an additional 60 degrees. Torque your banjo bolt to 20 foot-pounds and make sure it's nice and secure. Now that we have everything buttoned up down here, make your way back into the passenger compartment and release that brake pedal. Under the hood, we want to pay attention to the master cylinder. That's where your brake fluid's housed. Make sure you're topped off up to the maximum line. If not, add the manufacturer's specified fluid up to that line and reinstall the cover. Now back here in the wheel well, we're going to be paying attention to bleeding the brakes. There's going to be air inside the caliper. Bleeding the brakes is fairly easy overall, but it's easiest with a second person. We'll have one person inside of the vehicle. That person's going to carefully pump up the brake pedal approximately three to five times and hold it. While they're holding that pedal, I'm going to be out here and I'm going to carefully open up my bleeder screw by turning it counterclockwise and watch as fluid and air bubbles make their way out. Once that fluid and air stops coming out, I'm going to close the bleeder screw Ask the person inside the vehicle to pump up the brake pedal again and we'll repeat this process until we only see fluid and no air coming out of the system. Go ahead and pump up the brake pedal please. When doing so, fluid will come out. Make sure you have a collection receptacle under the area so you can recycle that fluid properly. While they're holding, let's use an 11 millimeter to open up our bleeder screw. I heard only air there. Let's close this. Go ahead and pump the brake pedal, please. I have a feeling this time we're gonna get some fluid. Look at all that air. Just let this do its thing for a second here. Okay, we'll close this. Go ahead and pump, please. Go ahead and pump. That last time, I did not see any air coming out of the system. At this point, tap on the caliper a couple times, repeat the process. If you still see no air coming out, the system should be pretty well bled. If you do see even one air bubble, repeat the process. Go ahead and pump up the brake pedal, please. Perfect. Go ahead and clean up your mess and reinstall your protective cover. Now that we have this nice and clean and dry, the next thing you want to do is have somebody in the vehicle pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. We need to confirm that we have no leaks from around where the flex hose connects to the caliper or even the bleeder screw. Now let's test the functionality of the emergency brake right in this area. Make sure you're clear. Go ahead and test that, please. See how that pivots as it should? At this point, we should not be able to spin the brake rotor. Go ahead and release the brake. That released completely. Spin the brake rotor. Perfect. Now that we've done that back there, make your way back up to that master cylinder. We need to make sure we're up to the maximum line, right up along the top there. Reinstall your cap. Make sure it's nice and tight so no moisture or debris make its way inside of the braking system. Let's make our way back into the wheel well.
Get the wheel in place. Start on all five of your 22 millimeter lug nuts, bottom them out, get the wheel safely back down on the ground and torque each of these lug nuts to 110 foot pounds. With the wheel safely on the ground, torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay friends, we've got our vehicle back together. Go ahead and pump up the brake pedal till it's nice and firm. After that, take your vehicle for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.